Luke 21, 26, Jesus says, men's hearts will fail them for fear and for looking after the things which are coming on the earth. Things that, you notice how suddenly everything just started to spiral out of control? Just a few years ago, there were more millionaires than ever in the history of America. And now all of a sudden, we're seeing riots in France and we're seeing instability in Greece and Japan is on the brink of collapse again. And there's talk everywhere that the, the, the almighty American dollar is losing its strength and its value. And there's, a, there's a, a concern which you should rightly have in your heart. If your value system is, is in these things, you, you really should be concerned. And just like Esau did, many who still have access to the promises of God are going to have to make a choice. Now, now Esau was one of the sons of, of, let me not just go into all the history, but he had access to the promise that God gave to Abraham. The promise of life, the promise of, of supernatural empowerment, the promise to, that he would be a blessing in the earth and it was going to flow through him. Just like you have that promise, I have that promise. But he had a choice to make. And one day he walked in and he, he was hungry and he, he saw he had a choice between what is promised tomorrow and will be eternal or what is here today and won't last for long. And it's almost inconceivable that he traded off the life of Christ that, was flow, that could have flowed through him for stew, for a bowl of stew. But you see, he held no value to the, the life of Christ. And that, it became the natural thing to trade it off. Why will people fall away? Well, because they've been part of the family, but never really internally embraced what that means. Never really came to a place of awe and saying, God, you promised me life. You promised to come and dwell within this earth and body. You promised, Lord, to make me much more than I could ever be in myself. You, you promised to lead me on a path through this earth and then into eternity where I'll rule and reign with you. And, and much of that is promise. You, you may not see the fulfillment of all of it on this side of eternity. And Esau was a man who just said, no, I, I just want it now. Just like the prodigal son, give, give me my inheritance now. I want the kingdom now. I don't want to wait until this, this physical life is over. I, I want it all right here and I want it all right now. I want to be wealthy now. I want, to, I want a mansion now. I want to rule now. I want it all now. And so he sold off what really is God and took the inheritance and headed in the wrong direction. Esau headed in the wrong direction and the prodigal son headed in the wrong direction. Malachi 1.3, the Lord said, I hated Esau and I laid his mountains and his heritage waste. God says, I hated the testimony of that man in the earth, walking out and maybe professing, yeah, Abraham's my grandfather. I mean, the promise is mine. But God said, I hated that image of God that this man portrayed in the earth. This, this self-focused, selfish, carnal man who claimed to be in the lineage of God. The Lord says, I hated this image of God in this man Esau. And you could say that the mark of owning neither the presence nor the promise of God was on him. He was, he was marked. Philippians 3:18 and 19, Paul says, many walk of whom, whom I've told you often and tell you now even weeping, that are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Their mind is on the things of the earth. Instead of the things of God, instead of the things of Christ, they live every day focused on the things of this world. Now the Bible shows us in Genesis 4.15 that the first marked man in the Bible was Cain. And the scripture says, and the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Now he was a man who willfully brought to God less than he knew that God required of him. He willfully did so. I, I, I can't help but plead for some here today that you're coming in even to a place where the glory of God is as strong as it is here, but you're bringing willfully, willfully is the word, into God less than he requires of you. There are things that you know that God is asking of you, but you're not willing. You're looking to be God in your own life and somehow circumvent God's will and God's word in your life. You're trying to justify practices, relationships, whatever it is that you're involved in. You're trying to make, make what is wrong right. You're trying to change the truth of God in your heart and bringing to God less than you know in your heart that he requires. And God put a mark on Cain and Cain became an unsatisfied wanderer. 
In a sense, he was marked to a life of endless searching and never finding that which satisfies. And I, I can't help but wonder why Christian people in the last two decades have been running all over the world looking for Jesus Christ. Is it, is it possible there's a mark there? Is it possible that they're individually not bringing to God that which is known to them that he requires? And so subsequently, because there's nothing where they are, there's no living relationship, there's no prayer life, there's no revelation, then suddenly there's some manifestation somewhere in the world and they're they're on by the by the scores they're on airplanes and flying all over the place looking for jesus christ but didn't jesus himself say if they say he's over here he's in the desert don't go there don't believe it don't he's omni he's everywhere he's omnipresent he's in the text of scripture and if you're a believer he's inside of you you don't have to look very far for him he's right here that's why you'll cry out to the lord and say here i am if, if we begin to do the work of god according to isaiah Isaiah says, and then you'll say, Lord, where are you? And he'll, you'll hear an inner voice saying, I'm right here. Here I am. What, what is it that you want me to do? Because you're actually walking in unison. You're walking in, in link step with me. An unsatisfied wanderer, marked to a life of endless searching and never finding that which satisfies. The Lord gave me a picture of somebody inside the Titanic after it hit the iceberg and most everybody has fled the ship or is in the process of trying to flee it at least. And you see a poor hapless soul down on the second or third deck, examining the cabins, looking for a comfortable place, all excited about all that is here that everybody has left behind. And say, wow, look at this one. This one has gold faucets in it and, and, and the clothing, that just like Achan when he went into Jericho, thinking no harm is going to come to them. And the, the, the insanity of it all. Of, of looking for comfort, looking for security in a ship that is going down to the bottom of the ocean. And folks, it's the same for a Christian who's looking for fulfillment as it is, and things that last in the things of this world. Now, I'm not suggesting you can't enjoy a walk in the park on a sunny day. I'm not suggesting we walk around mournful, hanging our heads all day. No, that's not it. It's, it's our, our identity, our, our satisfaction, who we are, what we're becoming is not in the things of this world, but in the things of God. The world passes away, John says in 1 John 2, 15 to 17, and the lust of this world is passing away. That means everything that satisfies the flesh, that which delights the eyes, that which gives pride to the human heart. But he that does the will of God abides forever. The man or woman who chooses to say, not my will, but thine, the promise of God is you will abide. You will survive. You will live. You'll have a future. You'll have strength where there is no strength. Doesn't the scripture say, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Though there be roaring on this side, though there be violence on this side, the, the minds of those, the lives of those who belong to Christ, there's a promise of peace. There's a promise of strength and security to the believer. The people of the opening text received the mark because that's where their minds were. That's where their strength was given to, as I said earlier. They failed to understand the seductive power of human reasoning that creates a path that it truly believes lead to, leads to safety, but it doesn't. Human mind is a seductive thing. And when you combine it with the power of evil and its reasoning, people can be led almost anywhere. There's a way that seems right unto a man, the scripture says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 39, they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. They knew not. I think of the multitudes that must have passed by the ark that God was building at that time on their way into the city to do whatever it was they were doing in the city. And I'm not suggesting all the activity was evil, but I am suggesting it fell short of the glory of God. And they, they knew where it was and they passed by. And scripture tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness and he would have been standing before the multitude saying, there's a day of justice coming. Folks, you've got to get right with God. You, you need to get into that place of safety, which he is preparing clearly, visibly before you. It's not hidden. It's not a secret. It's, it's not something you can honestly ever say when you stand before God. I didn't know it was there. I didn't know what it implied. You see, it implied a leaving of the pursuits as it is, the, the full pursuits of the things of this world and the beginning of, of the building of something that was being ridiculed by fallen man. 